It's Christmas time, but it's not Christmas. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Uh, today, we're going to be diving in to one of my favorite things to do in Logic, and that is make your own arpeggiators. Now, what is an arpeggiator? An arpeggiator is basically taking whatever chord we have or whatever note we have and playing those notes individually over and 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 over until we take our hand back off. If we play a chord, the arpeggiator would play each individual note of the chord at a time. Now we can change the settings, there's all kinds of arpeggiators and that's obviously very general, but what I'm going to dive into today is how I like to make my own arpeggiators within Logic. So let's jump into a Logic project. I just have a couple empty software instruments uh, and for the sake of this right now we're just going to load up an electric piano. So I'm going to grab Lounge Lizard and we're going to, just any electric piano is fine. Here's, there's the one we got. That is perfect for the sake of what we're going to do right now. So when we look at our channel strip right here, you can see a couple different things. Obviously up the top, this is just your setting. You can end up saving all of your own settings as whatever you want. This is our compression meter. If we click on it, it'll automatically add a compressor to our channel strip. We don't want that. Same thing with the EQ right here. If I click on that, we'll add EQ. I can leave that on because we're going to use it later. And then right under that is what we want, and that is MIDI effects. So there's a bunch of different things you can do here. We're going to do the first one, and that's arpeggiator. So instead of loading our own arpeggiator within Logic, we're going to take a regular instrument that would normally only play one note. If I play a chord, it plays a chord. And we're gonna turn an arpeggiator MIDI effect on that and it's going to arpeggiate the notes for us. Now, here's just what the preset would have done. Pretty dope. Let's see what all of this is doing. Now, uh, the main thing we wanna be concerned with is the rate. If here's our tempo, this is set to 16th notes right now, like you heard. Cool, if I change it to eighth notes. Right, little chiller. Let's just get a loop here. So now you can see we have that chord. It is arpeggiating out the three notes. Now the next thing we want to pay attention to here is the note order. So right now it's set to go up. That literally means it's going to play whichever notes we have in order going up and then restarting at the bottom. Next would be down. It's gonna do the exact opposite, right? Cool, we have up then down. Exactly what you'd think, it goes up and then it comes back down. Uh, we have in and out. This is hard to tell with such few notes if we add another octave of this. So you can hear what that one's doing is it's starting at the top and going the same time they cross and then they go back so you can hear that last would be random great then we have our variation this is how much variation there's going to be within that pattern and then after that we have the octave range so if i change this to four octaves and we originally just had our chord here if i change that to four octaves now It's gonna go all the way up four octaves and repeat the same chord we built. Great, that is all the parameters I want you to worry about for the sake of today's video. You can dive way more into what this does. There's tons of awesome presets in here. You can see we get things like this. Pretty simple chord and groove, huh? But that's great. For the sake of what we're doing, I wanna make the really ambient arpeggiator we hear way in the background of hip hop tracks. And in order to do that, let's go find ourselves a synth and then we're gonna turn the arpeggiator on and put all kinds of effects on it. So we go in here, we'll go into pluck synths and we'll just start searching around until we find something we like. This tiny nylon kalimba is perfect. I'm gonna open it up and just do a little bit of tweaking because I don't want the sustain full. I just want it one note at a time. That way, as it arpeggiates up the chord, there's not a ton of overlap and it doesn't get really muddy. Same thing with my decay and my release. I don't want them too big. That sounds pretty good to me. We're gonna put a ton of reverb and a ton of delay on this anyway. The main idea of this is to take these individual notes and to build sort of a wave of sound that then we put in a huge hall with tons of reverb so that it almost becomes just a sort of wash over rather than that individual plucked note. So now that we have this, let's go in and put our arpeggiator on. 
for the sake of what we're doing, I want it to go up and down. We'll probably end up going faster than 16th notes. All right, so I loaded a clap up in Ultra Beat just so we have a little bit of time and you can hear how I would have this work within the context of a beat. So we just put the arpeggiator on and I've selected up and down. I'm gonna change our octave range all the way up to four and then I wanna play in that original chord. So I usually stick to just one, one triad, three notes. That way when I add all four octaves, I don't have a bunch of repeat there on the octave because it's doubling every time. It's just those three notes, so all three can keep happening. So let's play in that triad and then we'll record it. Sounded pretty dope already. Now is when I like to test how high my range is actually gonna go. So let's listen to that. Do you hear how it's starting to come down a little too early and then restart before the start of that actual next phrase? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another whole octave of this. So now I have twice as many notes. So the odds that it's gotta go twice as high up, let's listen to that. That's pretty dope. It takes one full time to get up and come all the way back down. It starts to restart a little bit, but that is totally fine for me. Let's go through now and let's add in our delay and our reverb. So I'm just gonna use the actual stereo delay here in Logic. I'm gonna set my delay actually to be pretty long because I want that first wave to go and then I want the second wave to go and then I want the third wave to go. So we're gonna do, let's do a, a half note and a down half note and then that second one, we'll get rid of all the, the feedback. First one, we'll keep a little bit of feedback. And let's start playing around with it. Let's listen. All right, that's pretty cool. You can see the EQing I've done here. And the last thing I'm gonna add is our reverb. You know me, I'm still the same old B. I'm obviously gonna use a little plate from Sound Toys and we'll mess with the parameters of that a little bit. The last two things I would do is I would pull up my EQ to take a look at it. Because I'm gonna have a lot of other stuff going on, an 808, a kick, and all kinds of that in my low, I'll probably cut a lot of that out because the main thing we want are all those highs and all, all that reverb. Then the other thing I might do is I might switch it all the way to 30 second notes or somewhere in between. I think I like 16th notes better for this anyway. I mean, pretty hot. That is it. That is how I like to make my arpeggiators within Logic, you can use any instrument, right? That's the cooler thing I think about building your own arpeggiator rather than finding a stock arpeggiator that's already there. You could do this to an acoustic guitar. You could do this to a plucked kalimba. You could do it to a piano. You could do it to an electric piano. You could do it to a bass. A lot of basses, when they get up in that really high octave, especially a synth bass of some kind, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit me up in the comments with stuff you want me to do for future tutorials and hit that like button to make sure I know you're watching. And as always, subscribe so you never miss a beat.